Recently we did a video of all the new features in Gravity Sketch and we're not going to focus on those this week but we are going to focus on how to make your model graphically appealing with things like photographs and getting images out and adding little things like these characters to lock the scene to a scale. So let's dive right in and take a look at Gravity Sketch and some of the image tools. So we've made a cool scene and we've got a ship and we've got some people. Uh, let's have a look at who we've got. So we've got crew working on the ship. Got this guy talking to these guys. Uh, and you wanna start working around um, the ship with some some imagery rear. So basically it's taking some images out from this scene because we've done the, the core works done, the, the layout of the ships done, the scenes done. So first one we'll look at is, if we go to a blue button on your non-dominant hand, and then we can look at the photograph, take a screenshot. And this is where we've got loads and loads of options. So the first one we're gonna look at is just literally taking a photograph. So we've got a field of view change here. So as we move around, you can see if I pull right into it at the front there, that gives you some quite dramatic effects um, going all the way from that, which can be quite useful from a low perspective, all the way up to some crazy, crazy stretched views like that, which can be a little bit um, too dramatic and not really for this, you know, this size of scene really. So to take a photograph, simply line it up. And that's if you notice up here, we've got 58 mil. So let's do a f let's get it to something that we recognize, right? So we're now shooting at 50 mil, which is something we'd all use. And we'll just take a photograph. So you click with your non dominant hand f the trigger, and there you go. And that sends off a screenshot to wherever you've got it saved. So it's normally in the root of documents. Okay, so that's one way of, of starting things off. Now, if you're not so much for this scene because it's a big scene, you might want to play with the depth of field near. So I'm gonna play with it, but I wouldn't recommend it for large scenes. This is for when you're doing something small. So if this was a toy, maybe. So if you adjust both ends, you've got an, an ability to adjust the depth of field for the photograph. So if you're doing this for concept art and you just wanna bring something into focus, let's go on the guy at the front. See what happened there? I pushed through, the camera pushed through. We don't want to go too close. So I'm right at ground level now. And as you can see there, the depth of field is, there we go. I've just got the guy in the front in the depth of field. So, and I'll take a photograph of that. You'll see it was off. There you go. So that, again, that can be useful, not for this particular scene, I don't think. Um, if you look in the main scene, as well as I'm th um, moving it around, you can see that depth of field plane changing, which makes it really cool to use. So you've got a few other options down here, preview depth of field, which gives you the, the, the color of it. Square, which I wouldn't touch, because um, normally you'd be, unless you're doing it specifically for a size that you need, let's just get rid of that depth of field. And then this is useful, you've got show UI or not. So depending on the type of image um, you want, whether you want to show it as a screenshot work in progress or just use it for concept, then turn that off. And the last one I've just left, which is transparent background. And I use that a lot. So that one is where we just want to take it out as a, as a like a PNG with a transparent background. And that's the one I use the most. So if I take that picture now, that pretty much saves everything. The, the ground plane here, which is the stage, is actually visible. So you can turn that off at this point if you want. And you do that like this. So blue button, go back to your settings and you've got stage floor here. So you can turn that off and that would help got a straight line there. Now I'm gonna turn that back on and I've gone all the way. You've got circular or square there and I'll turn that on because I want that and I want to register the shadows for, for what we're doing now. So that's the first one and it's got you basic, um, basic skills of taking photographs in here. So let's move on to the next one, which is going to be same place. Let's go in there. Photograph, and we're going to go and look at this, which is add quad in Sketch. 
Okay, the second one is, as I've already mentioned, add quad in Sketch. So what does that mean? So first of all, we need to turn off the background, uh, the, the stage floor. So we go back up to settings, non-dominant hand, click stage floor off, up to photograph. And you can see now we've still got transparent background off, so we can't, we can't, we're on, so we can't see the background. And if we click now with add quad in sketch and then take the photograph, you get your imagery in the scene. And this, I'm now just scaling along with the grips, scaling around with the grips. And I can take it at any angle and I can even photograph the, the imagery. Um, but we don't want to do that. What we want to do is keep taking photographs from all angles. And the reason I do this a lot is because sometimes as I'm working and evolving a model, I want images around me of the thing I'm working on. It's almost like having a, a you know different views in, in something like Maya. Now you'd normally want that as a reference to model from, but it's actually quite useful to have it as you're working along and you might do different iterations and have it left in the scene. So that's quad, add quad in sketch. And again, can be quite useful. So the next one is orthographic viewport. So what does that mean? So say for example, we want to show all of those sides in an orthographic way. What we can do is go into the blue button and look down here and you've got orthographic viewport. If you click that, you're gonna end up with a box that shows you the quad view of the thing that you're working on. And that's giving you all of those images from the top side, left, right, as a, um, it's literally as an orthographic, so it's completely flat. So you can pull them out now. And the same as adding, as in the quad, sketch you can just drag them into your scene and this starts building you up as you're working this starts building you up a nice little library of, of basically you can do iterations so if we changed it fundamentally now we could leave these in our scene and be able to uh, reference them a really good way to enhance your images or imagery is to add some kind of uh, decals or um, something that can uh, visually add to the, the surface without having to, to go fully UV'd. So um, in Gravity Sketch currently, as we speak today, UVs won't apply to um, subdivision objects. They haven't implemented that yet. So you can only put them on surfaces. Um, there's a couple of ways that you might want to use this. So if you go non-dominant hand or non-drawing hand, and you've got um, reference images, which is th this button down here, and I've got these here that I've already made. One's vertical and one's horizontal. As you can see at the moment, they're just in the scene. They're not attached to anything. So you could, in theory, just take this one, go over here, wherever it is in the scene that you want to, to place it, hold it down and hit the anchor. That locks it to the scene and you, uh, locks it to the model and you could just place it like that if it's a flat surface. It isn't ideal. It's not the best solution, but it does get, you know, it's partially it is useful for to, to some degree. Um, a better way might be to go and make some some planes. So, for example, you could just take a make sure it's not sub D. So make sure that's not on. Take a cube, put a cube in the scene, and you can see it's mapped it all around that. So you could use that not for this graphic because it's obviously mapped it in such a way as to wrap around the cube. So um, you you could work out. Um, uh, the the UV mapping on that model and you could just put it on one plane but it's not something that I would suggest you do so what's the best way to do it then so we've got um, tools in here so purple button surface make sure point mode is on initial tension needs to be nothing uh, we'll make sure it's simplified and then we're gonna just click and drag it out into the scene. If you continue to drag this happen, if you continue to click while you're dragging, you're going to get points like so. Now, why is that useful? Just move this one over here. If I delete that one, why is that useful? Because what you can do is, if you've got a surface that's bent around like this, you can take that, and now if you if you flick with your thumb while you're in point mode, you're going to get the ability to move edges. You're going to get the ability to move um, 
click again on, with your dominant hand thumb and you can just move uh, points and that means with those two moves you can, you can basically bend it around a surface if that's something that you need to do so with a little bit of work I probably wouldn't put it where I'm putting it now but it's good to show you that we can do it um, it's going to bend it around. It's not adhering to the surface, it's not ideal, I know that, but it's a great solution for um, concept artists who just want to add some graphical detail to their models without going to the expense of taking it out and adding it all in another program. So I do use this all the time for adding decals. Um, and bear in mind, I've got two versions, I've got a vertical and a horizontal, because if you get the wrong one and you're doing this, uh, I'll just change the material to the other one. You can see it's going to be that way and stretched. So just just be mindful of that. That you you know your your orientation matters. If you stretch this one out this way, it, you know you're gonna you you could get issues. So try and do it. Um, try and make sure the orientation's correct when you when you're doing it. But that's a great way to add some you know some kind of information to the scene in the form of decals or some something that um, visually adds interest. For anyone not used to Gravity Sketch, it might be useful just to show how we how we add these characters in. Because they are very useful for giving scale and reference. So let me just put the floor back on. So settings, stage floor. And you can see I've got characters here, 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 and more importantly, up here. You can see how it really shows the scale well by adding a character in. So how do we add anything like that in? So that's quite simple. So back to the purple button, non-dominant hand. Uh, apologies, not the purple button at all. So go to the blue button, non-dominant hand, and you've got a prefabs here. Try and hold it away so you can see it all, prefabs. And in here you've got uh, mannequins, heads, and um, vehicles. So just push through with your hand, male or female, we'll do a female this time, and drop her in the scene like so. Now she's a little bit different than other um, gravity sketch models because you've got access to be able to pose her. So we'll just change her colour to the colour that we're using in this scene. And to be able to pose her now, um, you put her in the place that you want, for example. In fact, no, we'll do it this way so that, that you can see me pose her. Bring her down to scale the scene. And then on your non-dominant hand, click off the panel if you're still on it like I was. So just having hold of her with the grip on the dominant hand, click the blue button, and you've now got access to be able to pose her. So now from, for controlling the points, you can, it's only limited posing, but that's all you need um, to be able to just get, a, get the pose that you want. Um, let's just try a pose, like so. Turn the head a little bit, turn the body, just have a point in over to another part of the scene. Just say she's a technical engineer and she's just indicating to this guy that something's going wrong on the vehicle. So put her in scene, keep posing around until we've got it right. So it, it kind of pins you to um, a scale and I really find that that's quite useful. So something that you don't normally associate with VR that much yet, or VR creation tools, is transparency. And you can see there I've done a cockpit with um, a transparency on the windows, which is quite nice. So how do you do that? So let's just make a sheet of geometry, and then I'll show you. So to do it, we're going to go to a new layer. So blue button, layers, make a new layer down the bottom here. And then we're going to go to primitives and make sure we're on sub D. In fact, no, don't do sub D, because, but yeah, sub D is fine. Um, bit indecisive there. And we will just bring out a block, like so, and that'll be something to work with. Bring it to roughly where I want. There's no symmetry on, but I should have had it on. It doesn't really matter. And now you can see I've got the ability to move the points, the edges, or as normal subdivision modeling. So let's just do, let's just say we're gonna put, um, something like uh, this here. So we're gonna make a transparency across this, almost like a fake wing 
here. Um, take this piece, bring it down here. I'm just going to connect it here and then down. In fact, it would, wouldn't be there because it would intersect, so we'd have it behind here. And then we'll change that a little bit with some put some splits in now. Like so. And have it come in and down like this. More splits here, so we can avoid the avoid the pipe work. And now we'll subdivide it. Again, keep working on it, just filling in where it wants to be. Just trying to put it underneath those pipes. There we go. So, as if it's like a canopy that's going to be transparent. And then to make it transparent, to use it in that way, you just simply go to that layer and just knock the transparency down, like so. Now, it isn't so you're not doing transparency in the materials. What you're basically doing is you're faking the transparency by just making the layer transparent. But on some jobs, I found that quite useful. Well, exactly like this with the with the um, with the windshield. There, it just looked really good. And bear in mind as well, if I just take an engine and show you inside it, the colours obviously would be muted um, or slightly changed. And if you put a black or, or grey object in, it's going to tint it to that colour, which is again it can be quite useful. Certainly if you're doing experimental stuff like this and you wanted to just get some kind of transparency going. So play with the colours as well with the transparency because some of them show the transparency really well. Um, if you go all the way to black, you just you get that grey. If you go all the way to white, you're going to get you know another very different effect. So just do it suitable to your scene. But it's there, you know, it's a, it can be a good tool and it, and it does show in the, in the photographs uh, when, you're, when you're trying to photograph your scene. So it can be quite useful. Like that. Southern GFX is about helping you create your art in new and exciting ways. If you like the content that we're creating, then give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and we can let you know when we upload content on a Wednesday and a Friday every week.